Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another daily dose of Dismal Disney. We're going to talk about that upcoming boardroom battle. Was it uh, Wednesday the 3rd? Yes. Then we should know for sure what's going on with that. And uh, we've got a lot of stories here. Uh, this just broke that, according to the New York Post, Hollywood is skeptical that Bob Iger is going to step down. <laughs> Join the club, so are we. Uh, we said before there's some reason why he doesn't want Nelson Peltz and Jay Rizzullo on that board. And this this might be it or part of it. Well, yeah, and then there's talk that if he does, it's probably going to be Dana Walden who gets to do it. And the thing is, like, yeah, you know what her qualifications are, basically? She kisses Hollywood's ass and she's got boobs. I mean, I'm saying that as a woman because I don't think she's the most qualified, but she's the, fe the only female in the group. Uh, and they're all running with, Disney might get his first female CEO. But that doesn't mean that they're, they're best qualified. She is the one, if I remember correctly, yes. who axed a white sitcom. And bragged about it. And bragged about it. And she said that the sitcom was actually very good. It probably would have been a big hit, but there were too many white people, so she didn't greenlight it. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's not who we need in charge of Disney no. right now. Um, um, we're all, are we going to talk about how much is being spent? Yeah, this we're going to talk battle? about this. Uh, 70 million. 70 million dollars. And I had somebody uh, tag us in, uh, Ray Sukino here, tagged us in and said that they're even advertising on Instagram now. Yeah, they're no, all over the place. I'm telling you, it's 70. They're not saying how the breakdown is. I'm telling you, Disney's the one spending the lion's share. Oh, yeah. And I, it's yeah. absolute crap because, you know, that means they're taking money out of, you know, the company to do it. Well, he's taking time from the company. He's he's jet set and he's going around mm -hmm. trying to plead his case. I mean, this thing has they want to talk about a distraction. This this has become a big distraction because again, if it was just about those two board seats and they're the two weakest links in the boardroom, what's the big deal? What's the big yeah, deal? Yeah, well, yeah, it doesn't make sense. You know. Um, um, and there's also an interesting thing about this proxy battle too. We're we're going to talk I can we can mention that later on too. Um, what's different is normally when they were saying the blue card, the white card, the green card, normally how people would vote would be you would turn it in the card and you would have to vote the entire like you would turn that card in and you'd have to vote the way the card says. Like you have to vote the entire slate if you wanted to vote blue. This time, because it's a universal proxy card, it's one of the one of the early instances of this that people could actually pick and choose and mix and match. And this is not normal. So we already have a, a situation where people are looking at this because they're going to allow people to, to pick and choose what they want to vote for. You might want to just put, you know, Rizzullo in or just Pelts in or you don't want to, you know, you might want to bring this person in from the other team or whatever. You can do that with this card. It's a relatively new thing. So we're going to we can mention that as well. They're talking about that a lot. Yeah, so before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, you get woohoo if you do. Woohoo! Uh, yeah, so let's talk about uh, the possibility that Iger might not leave first, and then we'll go into how much they're spending. Is that mm -hmm. okay? Um, so this just dropped like, Shocker. like a couple of minutes ago. They said that, yeah, they said that uh, the heat's on to get somebody else to come in and take his place. But they said sources point out that one front writer, runner in the race, Dana Walden, the company's highly respected head of TV would be the first female CEO, like you said. Yeah, that's what they're all running with. She'd be the first woman. So I think even if she wasn't the fr front runner, they're all running with the story trying to make her the front runner. Yeah. Um, and again, if if you want Disney to go harder in the paint on the politics, hire hire her to be CEO because she is the one that bragged about axing shows because they were too white. Now, they do point out that she has very few quali well, qualifications. She came from Fox, okay? Yeah. So she wasn't with Disney. Like The other people that are up for it have been with Disney for years. She came with Fox with the acquisition. She's in like Flynn with all the um, the different uh, Hollywood types. Yeah. They, like, they vacation together and all that crap. But other than that, she really doesn't have uh, the qualifications, I would say, for running this company. Um, honestly, of the ones that they're presenting, I don't think her or um, Bergman have it. Demaro, I think, has it for the park side, but I don't know if he has it for the entertainment side. And then the guy from ESPN, Jimmy, I forget what his last name is, he actually, I think, he honestly, if you ask me, would be a better fit because he has the the, the Dis Disney Digital and that, mm. that stuff, as well as the ESPN and TV. So he has a little bit more, I think. But I don't think any one of these candidates have enough overall to run Disney. And they're bringing up like they that Stags and Mayor are in there and they could also be named. And honestly, they would be the better choices. 
Yeah, they would. Uh, Jay Rizzullo even would. Right. You know, and I but think these that's... guys would be the better choices. They have the experience. Yeah. They've run the, these two run, went out and started their own company, and they've been doing that for years. So of the, they would be. I would vote them before I would put any of these four in. And definitely not her. She's like the the least qualified of the bunch. Yeah. It's because yeah. she's got a woman. We got to have a woman CEO. Not necessarily a best choice. And this is coming from a woman. So they're saying some insiders are candidly hoping that the 73-year-old Iger extends his contract one more time before hanging up his mouse ears for good. Reps for Disney, Iger, and Walden did not comment. Um, again, is that partially what's going on? Because we, we said multiple times he's not going to leave willingly. If he was leaving in a year or two, what does it matter? What does it matter mm-hmm. if, if Rizzullo's on the board? What does it matter if Peltz is on the board? Um, it wouldn't surprise me if he stays the Disney source set of Iger. He is ageless. And there aren't many internal successors who are ready. Well, as I said, there aren't many internal successors who are ready. And he, even if they were ready, there's an internal, don't hire internally then. But even if they were ready, um, Iger's not going to hire somebody he's not going to control. Yeah. He he won't. He's not ready. He wasn't ready last time, which is part of the problem. Yeah. Um, they said. Pitaro, uh, Jimmy Pitaro is his name. Pitaro, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they have Josh Tomorrow, Bergman, um, Iger plans to name a successor and help train them before departing in two years, CNBC reported. But a former Disney executive said the move is classic Disney and that it doesn't necessarily mean right. that any of the four will cinch the job or that Iger won't extend his deal for another I term. I agree. It's the Disney succession playbook. Michael Eisner made Iger president and COO. Iger made uh, CFO Tom Stagg COO and then dumped him. Uh-huh. Uh, the source said adding that would give the promoted exec time to be tutored and tested and jettisoned if necessary. That's why the uh, the Chapek situation was so weird because well, he wasn't named. It was just like, oh, yeah, by the way, Bob, you're, well, you're in charge. People said that one of these four, they could just make them a president or something to test them out. And I, I, I covered that in an article before. They said it's possible they could do a COO or a president again with one of these four. And that's just a testing phase. Doesn't mean that they're going to actually get put in the CEO. They might not pass. Honestly, I don't think anybody's going to pass. Bob Iger, because he wants to keep running it. Yeah. And then here they mention that Candle Media, Mayor and Staggs mm-hmm. um, were also, you know, Passed Staggs over. might be a potential successor. Honestly, they would be more qualified, but they have their own company now. So I don't know if they'd be interested. Well, it's it's Disney and Candle Media is not doing that great. Like they bought a bunch of stuff. They were another one. They were kind of like Embracer Group. They went on a, a spending spree, probably learned it from, from Daddy Iger. And uh, they bought a bunch of stuff that didn't perform. Even Coco Melon, they ran that into the ground, you know? So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, they said two sources said that Iger is adamant about retiring in 2026, but both added that the sentiment sounds too familiar. He initially planned to retire in 2015, but he renewed his contract four times. Yeah. Every time they'd be like, oh, I'm going to retire. We'll give you more money. Oh, I'm going to retire. We'll give you more money. He, I think he was just saying it because they didn't give him more money. Yeah. They said it's hard to tell what he thinks. The last time around was something he felt he had to do because he effed up. The succession the first I still, time around. I, st- I, I still say that was not planned to come out then. I still say that. I saw those people's faces, the body language. That is not the behavior of people who knew this was coming. Anyway. Yeah. Um, he says, I'm out. It's miserable. It's no fun. I, I don't think he's going to leave. I think he's I think he's here uh, until he wants to leave. And he's probably looking at you know Joe Biden. Joe Biden's still in office and he's over 80 years old. Well, I don't think he's thinking of running for office anymore. I think he's too old. But the thing is, he couldn't, he was supposed to be out next year. And he, last yeah. year, after he was there a while, did nothing about succession. There was still like a year and a half to go. And he leveraged himself another two year extension. Even though it was like, why are you leveraging a two year extension now when you haven't even had time to do anything? Like, it's only been a few months. Just wait and see. You still have a year and a half. No, no. Two-year extension on top of that. Are yeah. we going to stall it out again? I think the only reason you're hearing these four candidates is because they feel like they have to give the shareholders something. So something. they think they're doing something about yep. it. That's exactly it. They said that, uh, yeah, it's pretty much like um, a lot of the candidates they have. Uh, Josh Tomorrow is probably the most liked by Disney fans. That's but true. But they said he's a theme park guy, and because exactly. Chapek didn't work out, they don't I, think he's I said going that to the other day too, did yep. I not? Yep. I said they're probably going to pass him over because Chapek was a theme park guy too, and that didn't work. I said that just the other day. I mean, personally, I like Josh tomorrow where he's at, but he doesn't have the the latitude to make the changes I think he would like to make. But like they're saying, he's he does know Hollywood entertainment and sports business, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. I think of the four that the Jimmy guy is actually the one who makes the most sense because he has uh, the 
gaming and the direct to, you know, the, yeah. the Disney direct stuff. He's doing the ESP and the TV stuff. He's been with the company for a number of years. Bergman is just, he's like, does all the movie stuff. And, yeah. and if they triple down the movie and TV, I think it's just going to be a disaster, just of a different kind. Cause they're just, they're just going to IP the hell out of thing worse. Yeah. Here they talk about Pataro. Yeah, successful um, running three seconds, second segments of the company. Yeah. See, and I, I hadn't read all this, and I've been, I, he makes the most sense to me, and that's what I've, I, I've been saying. He may, he seems to be the most qualified. Um, he's not the most well known, but he seems to be the most qualified of the four. All right, sources close to try, and now they're talking about the uh, the battle, and we'll go into that and how much they're spending. They said sources close to try and told the post that Disney's board hasn't changed from when Chapek was selected as CEO. They added that the special committee that is overseeing the succession playing needs to spend quality time with the four candidates. Mm-hmm. These things take time. They take time. I think Tryon's like, you're stalling for time mm-hmm. because you don't intend on leaving. And, and and Pelt says it should be open to external candidates too. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. It should be whoever can actually come in. And you work with the company. And even if you have an external candidate, doesn't mean they didn't work for Disney before. You can even right. find external candidates who have done other company work and worked other places that might be more well-rounded that have put time in at Disney. You know, there's uh, there's uh, there's a lot of things you should consider. Like Jay Rizzullo? But I'm sorry. Da- yeah. Wow, you want to say. Dana Walden, I do not no. think is it. She would be. Actually, I think she would be the worst case scenario. I think she would be too. But And they're all running with, oh, first woman. And that's what, you know, honestly, if I was a betting person, that's what I'd say they're going to do. Because not because she's the most qualified, but because she's got tits. Yeah. Um, they said whatever gets decided on Wednesday, the stakes are high, not only for Disney, but for Hollywood in general. According to well-placed sources, Disney is really important to us as an industry, says CEO at a rival company. An industry is like a river. When things are going well for an industry, the current is with you. As much as we are competitors, we need the industry to get its act Which is together. why they want her, Bergman, because they're going to do what Hollywood wants. And Hollywood knows they can, you know... Kiss their ass and get them to do what they want them to do. Well, then right under this, they said these larger factors could keep Iger at the helm of Disney for years to come. The exec said, I think he will stay. I think he's going to stay. I think that's it. I think he knows if he gets Pelts in and Rizzullo on the board, they're going to push his ass out. Because mm-hmm. it like, doesn't make sense. He keeps going around. They keep spreading this, spreading this narrative that Iger is the one that's going to be replaced. But that's not what they've ever said. No, he knows that's what yes. they're going to push for, though. That, so I, that's probably what's going replaced. on. He does need to be replaced. He does need replaced. Um, and he, I, I I just think it's funny because they're basically saying everything we've been saying. Down yeah. to the guy that's the ESPN guy that I think is the most is the, probably the most qualified of the four. I just think it's hilarious. I'm like, no shit. I wonder. I've been saying it's like finally someone's like conf- confirming what we've been saying. I can't speak today. They need they need somebody that has at least some understanding of the creative side of things. And Iger. But, but you have to understand. Kinda, sorta, but not really. I think you have to understand the creative side of things, and I. But I think you also have to understand. I think you need someone who understands the creative side of things, but I think you need somebody who just understands business overall Yeah. as well. The problem is some of these people, I think, are too up Hollywood's ass, and Hollywood wants them in because they can control them, and they can get what they want. I think that the problem with Disney being as big as Disney is is multifaceted, and you need somebody who can – who has experience in those different facets. And that's why I'm saying either the – um the Jimmy guy from ESPN or Stags or probably Stags or Mayor would be the best choice. Yeah. Um, because they have that. Anyway, back to uh, now. Let's talk about you know Disney spending too much money because they're trying to keep these two people in board seats. Which why? Yeah. So Business Insider estimates this at seventy million dollars for these groups to try and save or obtain board seats. I have not seen anything from Tryon or. Blackwells? I mean, they have their website. Trine has a yeah. website, and they've been putting out some marketing material, so I'm sure they're paying something. I think the one spending the lion's share of it is Disney. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And I, as an investor, I don't really want them spending my money on this crap to keep two people in the seats that I don't think should be there. Well, again, we've got um, this person here on Twitter telling us that they're advertising on Instagram. I've heard the ads on podcasts. Uh, I've seen the ads run before our videos on YouTube. Well, for- Bob, I could better disclose at the meeting how much money they spent on this. Yeah. It better be disclosed in the SEC filing how much they've spent on this. You could make a movie for that. A cheap movie, but you could make a movie for $70 million mm-hmm. that could have made you a billion dollars at the box office. And instead, you're just trying to keep your friends in, in, the, on in, the board. Yeah. On the board, right? Why? 
Yeah. So this is coming from piratesandprincesses.net, by the way. Um, you said that's a staggering amount of money that should underscore the importance of the current battle with Walt Disney Company. Yeah, it should. Uh, trying and Nelson Pelt's public website. Disney also followed suit with a site of their own. Um, why don't you tell me? Yeah, why don't you tell me everything that's going on here? Well, that's just what I'm saying. It's the same thing. That's all they know is it's about yeah. 70 million. We don't have the breakdown, but they're estimating. They think it's the most one of the most expensive proxy battles ever. That, yes. And I, I think it's Disney because Iger's flying all over. It, it, we mentioned before that. With this case, a lot of individual shareholders own about 40% of the shares. And I think that's going to make a break because we know that some different groups are going to side with this, you know, with Pelt, and some are going to side with Disney and all this other stuff. But it's going to come down to the individual shareholders more than ever. And Disney's trying everything they can to hit people that might only have 20 shares on Instagram, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. or wherever. And then the, apparently Iger is going out and trying to talk to these different management groups and all that crap. They're spending a lot of money to try to sway people is what's going on. Now, interestingly enough, I do mention in this, besides the fact that they're all spending this money on these websites and these, these PR pieces and all that crap, they're talking about the universal proxy card, and a lot of people are watching this battle um, besides the money, besides it being Disney, because it's very different than how it's usually done. And at this time, people are going to be allowed to, to choose, mix and match, and not just vote straight card. You had to vote straight card before, and now you don't have to. But it's not like a wide, it's, it's like one of the early instances of use. It's not a widely used thing. So people are waiting to see what's going on with that, too. So it's, it's a very interesting situation the entire way around. Um, but they're really, really trying to go after individual shareholders because they're, they want their votes. Yeah. And in this case, it does matter. Yeah. It's like, and I, I think I said that at the beginning when we first started talking about this, that there are a lot of people out there. They're Disney fans. They may not own any other stock, but they own Disney stock. Mm-hmm. And, uh, a lot of them, unfortunately, they're going to do what Disney tells them to do. Everybody they like, always do what Disney tells them to do. Yeah. Yeah. Disney counts on it. Disney knows they can shit in a box and, and put a price tag on it and people will buy it. It's a limited edition box full of shit. Mm-hmm. That's, you know. Those keep polishing turds and then put it out there and do the bare minimum and then act like they did something for you and doing you a favor. And these people just line up for it. Yep. So there we go, guys. We're going to wrap this one up. Yep. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting Wednesday. I'm sure we'll have a video after the uh, meeting. We'll see what happens. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. Bye.